the Frozen Sonic Mighty Revo. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. I don't think I ever enjoyed reviewing a printer more than the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K, and that was over two years ago now. What an amazing printer that was, and frankly still is, in its new cheapened guise as the 8KS. It was the first printer in the world, I believe, to attain 22 microns of XY resolution, and in those terms, it still beats all of the opposition except for the Mars 4 9K with its 19 microns. Those certainly were the golden days for Frozen. Since then, to me, they've stood still, allowing the competition to catch up. Whatever happened to the innovation and market leading gusto that we expected from Frozen? Well, I'll be honest, if you're expecting that in this review, you're not going to get it. When we first heard about a 14K printer with a heater, we just knew every brand was going to produce one, right? And that is what we have here. The Revo is Frozen's take on the latest screen to hit the printer market. And before going on, let's just deal with pronunciation. I've checked with Frozen and they pronounce it Revo though they're not particularly bothered how it's said. I wondered if it was going to be Revo, as in revolutionary printer. But to be honest, I don't think it's fair to call this product that. So I'm going to be all British about it and pronounce it as Revo, but you can pronounce it however you like. It arrived in a gorgeous box and that got me quite excited. And unpacked, it is a stunning looking machine. Even the Sundries box gives you a sense that you've got something special. That, by the way, isn't a heater, it's a USB plug-in air filter. It has a flip-top lid, and I've grown to love these since the Uniformation GK2. They save on space, give plenty of access, and, all importantly, stop you getting sticky resin all over the lid. The case itself is metal, giving us that sense of quality Frozen once inspired in us. The menu screen is large, the USB port is conveniently on the front, but the small power switch is hidden at the back, which is a mistake I think on a large heavy printer like this. These connections by the way are for a resin pump I understand, which thankfully doesn't come with the printer because those damn things never seem to work. Anyway, there's also a removable panel for optional venting, which I think is probably what I just did. The resin tank is large and metallic, with extended legs for easy locating. And note, there's no ACF liner, just a nice clear NFEP. The build plate is equally metallic, with four point adjustment screws and this etched surface feels slightly rough to the touch. You just know that prints are going to stick to it like crazy. Inside is where things begin to get exciting. Here we have a dedicated built-in heater, not some silly afterthought. This is meant to be integrated into the menu system and can be controlled by the user interface. Now I'm going to be honest with you, this works on a 30 minute preheat approach. After that, I believe the printer relies on the exothermic reaction of the curing resin to keep itself warm. Now for me, this isn't ideal. I much prefer the idea of a warm enclosure approach. So I have had a moan at Frozen about this and Frozen have nodded agreement and said that it's an easy firmware fix, which should follow shortly. There's an interior light, again controlled by the UI. And most fun of all, there's a camera. This is adjustable and magnetic, so you can position it anywhere on the metal carcass. The Revo has Wi-Fi connectivity, and together with an app, you can monitor the progress of your print, receive error notifications if there are any, 
and even see still shots of the print in progress. Once complete, you can download these into a movie to impress those you love most. Now, quick health warning here, you're about to see some serious flickering, so if that's an issue for you, look away. It seems, regardless of the UI setting, the light turns itself off whilst printing, and there's just enough mistiming between the camera taking a picture and the light coming on to create this annoying strobe effect. Again, I hope this is something that can be fixed by a firmware update. We've already seen the air filter, and that plugs into a USB port, which annoyingly obstructs the camera a little, but only a little. The screen is, of course, a 14K, and is that better than a 12K? Well, yes and no. In a nutshell, there's more pixels one way, but not the other, creating more rectangular, rectangular pixels, increasing resolution in one direction, and a tiny drop the other. But all in all, from what I've seen of this printer, I think I prefer the 14K over a 12. It seems to print a little smoother. And on the subject of this screen, and listening to feedback from print farms in particular, Frozen has incorporated a quick change screen, which takes only around a minute to replace. This is a neat trick, and is much better than dismantling the whole printer. The tray is still held with removable bolts, but that's tried and tested mechanics. The dual linear rails with ball screw are typically sturdy and smooth, and the plate slides on nicely with the turn of a big knob. The printer should arrive pre-leveled it seems, and the Revo has auto-leveling built in, though of course it has manually adjustable screws on the plate should there be a need for fine tuning, which in my case, there wasn't. There's also a few other intelligent features, such as residue detection and failure detection, which feed through the app to let you know what's happening, if anything. As mentioned, the menu screen is large and clear. The user interface is typically easy to understand, with nice responsive features like sliders, though learning where everything is may take a little time. And importantly, these intelligent features can all be turned off if you fancy an unintelligent printer. It seems Frozen have bought out a new and exciting resin to really show off the Revo's abilities, but they haven't sent me one to try, so I'll stick with the Aqua 8K. The preheating system does seem to be a success, and the printer waits patiently whilst it warms up. As always, I started with the Ameralabs Town test print, and I think this is a very nice print. In fact, let's compare it to the one from the Mini 8K, with the same settings and the same resin. See what I mean? The 14K is definitely smoother than the 8K, and there's a little more detail too. The shadows are deeper on the Mini 8K photo thanks to the light source, but even though they're close, the smoother and more detailed 14K does win for me. This ring and pendant are my creations. I've printed them in a desperate hope that someone out there might actually want to buy the SDLs cheaply on Etsy or Colts 3D. Of course, I've also turned to our buddies at Archfland Games for something more exciting to print. So what do I think of the Frozen Sonic Mighty Revo? Well, it has its quirks. But luckily, these can be rectified by firmware updates. So, on the whole, I really like this printer. It's great to see Frozen getting back in the game, and I feel without a doubt this is the best printer they've produced since the Mini 8K. The only drawback of this is the price. It's not a cheap printer, that's for sure. And as I've said in other Frozen videos, if you're interested, 
please click the link in my video description. It's an affiliate link that Frozen insists that I use and they've made it clear that if I don't use it, there's every chance there won't be any printers to review in the future for me. You'll find all of these features on other products, don't get me wrong, but Frozen has done an excellent job of integrating them together into a coherent quality package. In fact, just to shock my regulars, printers come and go in my workshop, but the Uniformation GK2 has been permanently located as my go-to printer since I've had it. But not anymore. I'm so impressed with the Revo that it's taken the GK2's place as my new go-to machine. There is quite a price tag attached to this printer, but I genuinely feel Frozen has done a good job here. And for me, I think the extra effort deserves rewarding. This is a printer designed not to disappoint, and for me at least, it certainly hasn't. Well done, Frozen. It's good to have you back. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, and thanks for watching.